It's the Packet Froa! Welcome to the channel! Hey guys, I haven't made a proper video in a while, and when I noticed that Cisco released a new version of the Nexus 9000V, I figured why not? So a neat feature in this new release is that Cisco has added two-stage configuration commit. So what this does is it lets the Nexus act a lot more like iOS XR or Juniper, where you do your configuration then type commit but it still gives you the choice there. So you can do things the old way where you type all the commands that are instantly applied, or you can choose to do the new way. So to properly play with this, I figured it'd be fun to uh, use Vagrant to automate our lab. So I've used Vagrant a few times in our videos, uh, and this is the development tool that lets us uh, automate uh, building VMs with certain parameters, and it's useful for building testing environments and uh, tearing them down after we're done, that kind of thing. To install it, you simply just download the binary and run it. It works on pretty much all the main operating systems, Windows, Mac, that kind of thing, Linux. Um, and you just download it and run it in your command prompt. If you have something like Choco, which is the Windows package manager, then you would just go ahead and type Choco install Vagrant. I already have it installed, so it's just gonna say I already have it, but it will just go ahead and download the latest version. And that's all you need to do there. So back to our web browser, let's have a look at Cisco. So if I search for the Nexus 9000V, ordinarily we would download the OVA or maybe we do the QTAO for, for CML, that kind of thing. But instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna download the virtual switch for Vagrant, which is a box file. And the box file just has everything that Vagrant needs to be able to run a VM. Now I've already downloaded the image and put it to where I need to be, but you just download that and uh, put that where you need to for following along. Now, since Vagrant is based on uh, Ruby, I like to do my Vagrant files with uh, RubyMine. You can use anything you want there. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day there, but it has some nice integrations that uh, make it a bit more friendly to use. So the first thing I've done is I created a JSON file. And what this does is just describe the box there. So the main thing is we gave it a name, we gave it an optional description, and then we just told it the version there so it can keep track of it when we are using the solution. And then the only caveat that I'll point out is that when you define the path to the box there, this has to be fully qualified. You can't just say, hey, it's in this folder. You have to do the whole path. Otherwise, they're going to yell at you. At least on Windows, uh, I find the Linux and the Mac one is a little bit more forgiving, but it's best to always be fully qualified. So the file itself is stored here. And then I have everything in the coding vagrant Cisco directory there. So that's everything we need for this production. So what I've done is I've opened up a terminal where I can type my commands and we can see that Vagrant is installed and working there. And we can see it basically saying, hey, I haven't done anything yet because you haven't told me what to do. So I mentioned there are some integrations with RubyMine and Vagrant there. And one of them is that I can simply go tools and go Vagrant. And then I can create init, which is gonna create a Vagrant file in the root of my directory which I can edit to figure out what we're doing here. So I have a bunch of boxes that I use for different labs, whatnot there. And we can see that we don't have any uh, Cisco stuff there because I haven't added it yet. So what we're gonna do is just click away from here and we're just gonna say vagrant box add. And then I need to give it the fully qualified domain name for where this is. I'm just gonna copy this part because I Eight typing. And then I'm going to point this to the JSON file. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here. And what we should see is that uh, it's going to add the box based on the stuff in this JSON. And it, you can see that it's added the name that I've added here. And it's adding the right version, which I added here. So that's looking pretty good. So now that that's done, I can go back and do my init again. Now we see we have our Cisco 9KB. If I click on this, 
all that is doing is just typing vagrant in it and then the name of the file for me there. So it's just saving me a little bit of typing, but I like doing it because it's a fancy button. And basically it's saying edit the files you need to and then type vagrant up when you're ready. So I am going to double click the vagrant file. And this is just a series of instructions of how to run thing. And you can see that it's written in Ruby here. So the way Ruby works is that basically on the left side is the things we're doing. And then when we have these pipes, we're saving the previous command as a variable that we can reference later. So we can see that we're referencing Vagrant and we're doing the configure two, which is the API version. And then when we go down to here, we're referencing config and then building that configuration as we go there. And that's how Ruby uh, divides the uh, configuration segments and such. So we don't need to change too much here. Um, we have our name, which is just uh, our box. And we can see there's a bunch of other options and explains what we need to do here. Uh, there is one change I need to make though, because I have the VMware Workstation uh, plugin for Vagrant, which lets me work with VMware Workstation. But ordinarily, Vagrant will work with uh, VirtualBox by default. But uh, because I don't want to jump through a bunch of hoops, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to use VirtualBox. So I'm just going to uncomment this. And we can see what we're saying is we're going to use the VM provider VirtualBox. And then we're going to reference that as VB if we need to do more configuration. So you can see down here that we have VB memory for the RAM. Now, Nexuses take a lot of memory. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take this off. And we're going to raise this to about 8 gig. And in fact, we don't need quotes there because it's just a number. And just for fun, I'll also raise the CPU to be 2. Make that a little bit prettier. There we go. And then I want to have the end so that this segment is over. So that's all the editing I'm going to do for here. We're just going to boot this up and play. So we can see here that all we're doing is telling us VirtualBox with uh, the 8 gig RAM and 2 CPU. And then we're just telling it which uh, box to run. So with all that out of the way, we're just going to go to Tools, Vagrant, and Up. If we're on the command line, we just type Vagrant Up on the folder and the same thing. And what this is going to do is this is going to build the virtual machine in my virtual box environment for me. So if I bring up my virtual box, you can see that it has created a virtual machine and it's starting to build things. You can see that it's running 8 gig RAM and two processors and we didn't really customize anything else. We won't look anywhere. What I'll do is I will pause this for a minute. And when it comes back up, we'll play around in the version and see how that uh, new configuration feature works. All right, that's built. So how do we access this? So there's a couple different ways we can go. Uh, because of the integration in this tool, I can go ahead and go Vagrant. And then I can go start SSH session. And it's going to read the Vagrant file to get the information for me. And we can see we're connected to it. You might be wondering why we're looking at a bash shell when this is a Nexus. And this is just a quirk of the Cisco box file. All you do is you just go switch user admin. And then the password is admin by default, and we're into our Nexus. If I wanted to uh, use my fancy uh, secure CRT, well, I basically just do the same thing, except for I use the uh, secure CRT instead. So here is my secure CRT. I just open up the PowerShell well, shell, and then I'll just go into the path. So that's V drive, and then encoding. Vagrant, Cisco, why did I pick such a long path? Here we go. And then if we look here, I just have to type Vagrant SSH. And this will connect me to the same SSH session that the uh, Ruby mine did. And then in here, I just do my switch user. And we're into our Nexus. All right, so let's play for a feature why we started making this video. So ordinarily, we would do configure terminal to configure things. But instead, what we're going to do is configure. And we now have dual stage, which is what's going to enable our commit mode. So we'll go to dual stage, and we'll enter in some command. We'll say host name, host name, which is say is more Cisco, give it a domain name. We'll give it a loopback. 
Yeah, why not? Why the description will just say uh, more system. So I can see that we haven't actually changed our host name yet, but if I go ahead and type commit, I can do commit to apply the configuration, or I can do commit confirmed if we want a Juniper style uh, rollback. So let's just go ahead and say commit confirmed, and we'll just go ahead and say 30 seconds. So you can see that our host name is now more Cisco01. And after 30 seconds or so of awkward silence, we should have a rollback. There we go. All right, so we can see we're back to where we are. So this is basically the same thing you would expect from a Juniper or a Cisco SD-WAN or um, iOS XR there. It seems like Nexus is joining the fray. But I do like the fact that it's still a choice. You can um, uh, choose to do things as normal there if you're doing your scripting or whatnot there, or you can choose to do this mode if you're doing operations there. So I like that. You can also do some other stuff there. So let's just say host name is more Cisco02. Commit. And we can uh, have other things that we want to do here. So I can say show configuration type configuration. And we can go commit. We can see the changes and let's say this version. So you can see here that in the first one there's the host name, and then we have more Cisco there, so it keeps track of all the different changes. If we want to do a rollback, we can do configuration two and pick the rollback number. So let's just say we go back to the first one and it's going to start a rollback for us. So this takes us back to our first commit. And that's about everything I want to play with that particular feature. So why don't we uh, tear this down and let's replace uh, this with a more advanced Vagrant example since we're here and then we'll explain what it does and wrap it up. So we're going to go ahead and say Vagrant destroy, which is going to tear down the virtual machine, which is going to tear down the virtual machine. And again, you can see the syntax here. I could choose to type this out if I want to there, but uh, if I have a button, so I'm being lazy. So this is a much more robust uh, Vagrant file that I use for my spy and leaf labs. So you can see here that we have a bunch more configuration, but it's still reasonably short. So the first part here is that we are basically declaring that this is indeed a Ruby file. And then I like to set the API version as uh, two here rather than hard code it. Uh, now, basically all Vagrant files are version two right now there, but eventually if the hash corp decides it's gonna be version three, then I can just update that variable, but not a huge deal either way. And then we can see that we define our configuration file. We're using our Nexus 9K. I've done the resource stuff that uh, we did above there. So basically I'm setting it to be VirtualBox and I'm using the eight gigs and the two CPU. If I felt like it, I could get this working on VMware Workstation, but I'm being lazy. Uh, basically what I have to do is I have to build the virtual machines then create my own box manually. Uh, when a vendor like Cisco gives you a box there, it's almost always going to be VirtualBox. We have some housekeeping here, which is uh, basically just telling it not to try and update the uh, guest uh, uh, binaries uh, because it's not actually a Linux host. A cool feature that uh, Cisco started supporting in the TNX uh, versions is that it started working with the Vagrant synced folder. So what this does is that we have a folder here, which is this guy here. And uh, what we're basically saying is just like with Docker, with sharing a directory or whatnot, uh, we're basically saying anything in the shared folder is going to be shared to this directory in the virtual machine, which is boot flash, which is our flash in the Nexus. And then we have a folder called shared. So this is handy if we want to share scripts or something um, to a virtual machine there uh, to make life easier rather than having to copy and paste uh, direct, uh, files or do TFTP or that kind of thing. And then I have a bunch of scary looking code if not used to Vagrant. So this is a loop and I'm basically saying that for start at one and then go up to two. So I'm gonna be creating two spines and basically we're just gonna iterate through uh, each one of these. So the first one's gonna be spine zero one, the next one's gonna be spine zero two. Then anywhere you see this, it's just gonna be replaced by the number of the iteration there. So. This would be spine leaf 
0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and then 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2. What we're doing is we're creating some private networks, and these are going to be used just to simulate the interfaces between our spine and our leaf. So uh, what we're going to have is spine 0, 1, 2, leaf 0, 1, spine 0, 1, leaf 0, 2, and so on and so forth. And this is going to be our standard spine leaf architecture where each spine connects to each leaf switch. And then I'm customizing this there. So the interfaces are set to promiscuous mode. And basically this is just so that uh, things like multicast and whatnot uh, work properly. And then I am using what's called a provisioner, which is a way of injecting commands there. So this could be uh, shell commands like I'm doing, or this could be Ansible or Puppet or Salt, whatever you want to do. Uh, but uh, essentially, I'm using the Nexus feature VSH uh, to push a bunch of configuration down into the um, Nexus there, so I don't have to configure everything from scratch here. So uh, you can see I'm set the host name, which is pretty straightforward, and enable some features like OSPF and VGP, uh, some automation stuff, because hello, it's me. And then uh, some other stuff that might not be quite as intuitive is the MAC addresses here. And the reason why I do this is that the uh, Nexus uh, 9000V image um, doesn't really uh, go out of its way to set uh, static uh, MAC addresses that are unique on each uh, instance there. So if you're doing labs there and something like CML or whatnot, it would do this step for you or generate some MAC addresses. Uh, but since this is vagrant, I'm just saying, Okay, iterate through and create some uh, new MAC addresses uh, so that uh, we don't have the same MAC address on both uh, switches and cause some and uh, cause some communication issues. And then for the IP addresses, I'm basically just iterating so that uh, each spine has their own unique IPs. And then leaf, pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's just um, the number of interfaces is two because uh, the leaf only connects to uh, each spine. And then basically the same kind of thing for the uh, configuration, no real surprises there. So if all that said, I'm just gonna go ahead and go vagrant up. Now that's gonna take a fair amount of time there because I'm building five Nexus virtual machines there. So I'll pause this and probably in about 10 minutes or so, I'll check back with you. All right, so that finished up. We can see that we have five VMs up and running here. And we can see that our process is finished, so we've done all the stuff that we want to do. So if I wanted to, I could go back to my PowerShell here, and I can say Vagrant status. And this is going to give me the status of all the VMs. So we can see that we have five VMs running. And because this is VirtualBox, I can also do this with the VirtualBox command line. So I can see VBlogs manage list VMs, and we can see the same VMs here. Now, if I wanted to connect to one, I just go ahead and grab the name. Now, before I did uh, just the SSH command, but now we have more than one, I need to tell it which one. So I'm just gonna say Vagrant SSH, and we'll enter in the spine. And then we need to do our switch user, so that's to admin. Now, I should be able to just go ahead and check the routing table. And we can see that we have OSPF up and running because I pre-configured all those commands. It is about all the confirmation we need that we've done everything properly here. So that's just an example of building a more advanced network using Vagrant there for your testing. I normally like to do CML for everything there, but variety is the spice of life. Anyway, this was just a quick one there. I haven't posted something successfully in a while. And in fact, when I tried to make this video, I our drive ran out of space there and I lost the first video. So this is like take three. Uh, to look out, uh, I'm gonna be releasing a bunch more content soon there. And I've got some collaborations with uh, David Bombal and Keith Barker that are working their way through editing. So they'll see a lot of me eventually. Till then, see you next time. Thanks for watching.